أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الذين كفروا سواء عليهم أأنذرتهم أم لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى أبصارهم غشاوة ولهم عذاب عظيم ومن الناس من يقول آمنا بالله وباليوم الآخر وما هم بمؤمنين يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب أليم بما كانوا يكذبون وإذا قيل لهم لا تفسدوا في الأرض قالوا إنما نحن مصلحون ألا إنهم هم المفسدون ولكن لا يشعرون وإذا قيل لهم آمنوا كما آمن الناس قالوا أنؤمن كما آمن السفهاء ألا إنهم هم السفهاء ولكن لا يعلمون وإذا لقوا الذين آمنوا قالوا آمنا وإذا خلوا إلى شياطينهم قالوا إنا معكم إنما نحن مستهزئون نعود بالله من شرط الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so this is going to be um, uh, going through Ayah, um, Surah Baqarah 11 and 12, inshallah. Um, let me share my screen. Um, Surah Baqarah 11 and 12. And um, basically what... Uh, let me see something. Let's see... Um, basically, uh, let's see here. So what does Allah say in ayah number 11? And before we were, uh, we went through where Allah gives the al-fatiha, gives the blueprint for success. Then, uh, as I say, Allah lays out what's most dangerous, the most dangerous people to the mu'min, to the believer and to the person who's trying to, who is trying to, uh, you know, live their life in a way that's pleasing to Allah. And have their deeds accepted. Uh, the most da- dangerous is the uh, is these people who Allah described. Allah says, "وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ لَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا نَحْنُ مُصْلِحُونَ." When it is said to them, uh, "Don't cause corruption in the earth. Don't uh, cause trouble for the people." They say, "We are only peacemakers. We're doing this for the benefit of people. We're doing this for the greater good, or we're doing this." Uh, this is actually good what we're doing. And Allah says, Ala inna hum hum al wala killa yashburun. That indeed they are actually, they are the corruptors. They're the one who are causing the corruption in the earth, but they fail to perceive it. Now, uh, these regarding these ayahs, 11 and 12, about the people who do the corruption, and then they say, you know, we are actually, we are the, when they're, when they're told, stop causing trouble for the people, uh, you know, in the community, on the earth, in the, in the world or whatever, they're saying that we are actually peacemakers. Uh, but in reality, they are actually the corruptors. These, the people that are referred to in these ayahs, um, Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masud, will say that this ayah is speaking about the hypocrites, the munafiqeen. And uh, as we know, the munafiqeen are the, they are the worst. They're worse than kuffar. Okay, the munafiqeen is the person who is 
um, presenting themselves as being a Muslim and they are deceiving the Muslims and they are living amongst the Muslims and, 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 and operating their lives as Muslims and benefiting off of them or uh, harming them covertly uh, from within. And that's why they are worse than the Kufar. And these eyes in Ibn Abbas and Ibn Mansur both uh, re refer to them as speaking about the hypocrites uh, specifically. So in uh, the Tafsir Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir talks about uh, this eye and says that it means um, the mischief, their mischief is disobeying Allah. And this is like the the when it is when they are saying when the people are saying to them la fil don't cause corruption on the earth. This is what Ibn Kathir referring to as far as what that corruption is. Acts of disobedience on the earth is corruption. The mischief is disobeying Allah because whoever disobeys Allah on the earth or commands that Allah is be disobeyed. He has committed mischief on the earth. So when we look at this and what Ibn Kathir is explaining is that this is uh, the one of the biggest things that the mischief that you can do is commanding people to do the opposite of what um, of what Allah has commanded. You're, you're, you're disobeying and going against what Allah has said. Even the person can say that they are Muslim. And they can say that they're a big sheikh and they're getting their, their information from some holy court or some sahaba is, is taking them up and teaching them things and bringing them back or through dreams or whatever. The thing is, if whatever you're saying is in opposition, uh, is in opposition to what Allah is saying, this applies to you or it applies to us, whoever it is that's doing the opposite of what Allah is saying, that this is applies to those people in this ayah. When when it said, La tufsidu, don't come cause corruption, uh, cause facade in the earth. La tufsidu fil ard. This is what it applies to. He says, he has committed mischief on the earth. Peace on both the earth and in the heavens is ensured through obedience to Allah. Okay, so the obedience to Allah is how the the, the, the earth, the community, the family, whatever it might be, is how the peace and the order is assured and, and um, is how it would be restored if it ever got out of order. So anything opposite to that, going against going against the way that, that Allah is doing, is corruption. Now, there's levels of corruption, of course. There's levels of corruption. You know, someone, you know... Uh, you know, maybe if someone is watching something, you know, illegal or illicit or something they shouldn't be watching on their phone, that's a form of corruption. They're corrupting themselves. Uh, or if they're sharing with other people, that's a form of corruption. Now, uh, maybe killing those people for that or fighting or, or injuring them in such a way uh, could be a greater form of corruption. So there's levels of corruption. But the point is, anything that goes against what Allah has ordered and the commands of Allah and what is what is correct as Allah has set forth in this religion is corruption. And that applies to this ayah. And Allah knows best. So when we when we look at it from the perspective of our um uh lives and what we're mainly dealing with, these deviant uh cults, you know, in that are claiming Islam as the foundation. And as the reason for their, uh, as as the reason for their, the way they operate, what they believe, how they believe, how they uh, deal with the people, and these things, look at it from that perspective. You say, well, what does this have to do? This ayah about munafiqin have to do with these people, these cults? Are we saying they're munafiqin? No, we're not calling them munafiqs, because only Allah knows. Um, Rasulullah knew the munafiqeen of his time because Allah informed him who they were. But the the uh, munafiqeen, the, their actions, yeah, you can you can see some of their actions and tell this person is doing some things that a munafiqeen would do. But they may have belief. It might not necessarily be a uh, 
claiming Islam, but really don't believe in it at all. But they could be a person that just they're greedy. They want power. They want money. They want fame. They want fortune. They want leadership, whatever it might be. And they are doing the things that a monastic would do, uh, you know, to get it. And because a monastic operates in the way that they do, it's for a worldly gain. A monastic does not pretend to be Muslim because he thinks he's going to get some sort of reward in the Akhirah. Unless maybe he's a he's a uh, Christian or a Jew and he thinks he's going to be, you know, according to their religion, maybe they're going to be rewarded. But a person who's not Muslim, they're not doing any acts of worship, any salah, any fasting, any of that stuff, because they think they're going to be rewarded like the Muslim is. So that's not the that's not the case for for them. But the the people, for they be TMO, any of these other cult groups. We're not saying that they are monastics, but we have to look at the ayah. We have to look at them in light of the ayah and say that these are some of the characteristics. Because what do they say? Well, we can use TMOA as the example. These are some of the things that they say. We are a peaceful people. Why do they hate us? Now, who hates them? They say, you know, Wahhabis hate them. They say uh, R2F. They, they hate us. They say John Dogger, the guy who, you know, allegedly wanted to, to harm them, whether why do they hate us? Um, our Morshid Kamil's mission was to guide all of mankind. These are the things that they say. We don't want any criminals or criminal activity within our community. And the Jamaat is built on our, their group is to build on love and not hate. All of these things are things that they say. And they are, you know, on, on face value, say, well, they, they seem to be um, they seem to be nice things or they seem to be things that are, that are acceptable for, for a group. But as we know, this is the, what well, far as TMOA specifically is concerned, TMOA. They say, we are peaceful people. Why do they hate us? Now, I actually don't even know. Uh, I mean, John Dogger is one person that, I mean, he seemed like he was mentally unstable anyway. But uh, for the most part, don't not that many people even know about them, let alone hate them. They just indifferent. They don't really care much about them. TMOA specifically, maybe they're Muslims at large, but they don't consider themselves as part of the general body of Muslims. They think they're exclusive, uh, uh, above and apart from the main body of Muslims. But they do have a history, a well documented history of uh, of terrorism. Al Fukra Jamaat is what they were before. And their, their, their history is documented that they actually were causing corruption in the earth, attacking people, murders, uh, bombings, and all these other things. So if they're going to ask the question, well, why do they hate us? Uh, that could be one reason. If someone did, if they knew about this, maybe they would hate you. They really would dislike you. Um, they say that uh, that their um, uh, that their Morshid uh, Kamil's this mission was to guide all of mankind. This is the thing that they say. Because one thing about the, one of the characteristics of the Munafiqeen, they say one thing, they believe another. They're doing one thing when they're with one group and another thing with another group. So if uh, they they are, they're, they're, their leaders, original leader, Mubarak Jilani, was, uh, his mission was to guide all of mankind, yet they are a close, exclusive group. And they don't consider uh, all of mankind to be welcome unconditionally or uh, part of their group. I mean, now they're even having people sign uh, non-disclosure agreements. They're throwing people out of the group constantly. So this is a thing where these are these are things actually, and we'll get to it momentarily, that are actually causing corruption. They're causing corruption on earth by by pretending to be one way and then then actually your actions and beliefs actually are something completely differently. This is one of the traits of Munafiqeen. Um, they say they don't want any uh, criminals or criminal activity when they selectively, certain criminals are allowed to uh, not only stay, but continue their criminal activity while others who are expendable are thrown out. And they say uh, that the group is built on love, not hate. When <laughs> the... If the group is built on love and not hate, then I, I, I don't know of any example in which they could show that their love what? Love for money, 
love for exclusivity or something, but love for the people and uh, a love uh, amongst them. No, this is not. Uh, this is this is not the case. But they do actually show hate. They uh, say very foul things to people who leave the group. Anyone who says anything, anything, Muslims, put it this way, a Muslim can say something that they deem derogatory about their sheikh, about their leader. And they will excommunicate them, call them a dog, call them a kafir, call them all types of names. But yet a Christian, a non-Muslim will say something about Allah that's worse than that. They will say about Allah that he has a son. They say they attach divinity to Isa alayhi salam. They say Jesus is the son of God. They say all these type of things. Yet they're uh, loving and, and no hatred whatsoever. They claim that they're all the seeds of Abraham, which this is not even true. Uh, we're not all the seeds of Abraham. We're not all the descendants of Abraham. We're all the descendants of Adam, السلام, but not uh, Ibrahim, السلام, but still. You can have a person that can say something derogatory, that they consider derogatory, but they can just say, what your sheikh said is wrong. What your leader, your sheikh has said is wrong. And this person will be hated, excommunicated, and uh, ostracized. Yet the Christian can say, Jesus is the son of God. And they have no hatred in their heart. It's all love. Muslim Christian from form, let's come together. It's contradictory. Um, so these are the things that they say. Uh, as far as on the, uh, on the previous page. Now, these are the things that they actually do. This is what they do. Say one thing about being love, loving and law-abiding, all these things. But the truth of the matter is what they do is they uh, they corrupt the, the aqidah of their people, of the people. And this is, as we looked at it earlier in the earlier slide, that the, the definition, what a definition that Ibn, Ibn Kathir gives as far as what corruption actually is, is that disobeying Allah's commands. This is causing corruption in the earth. And what they do is what when Allah is giving uh, things that are well known, there's nothing like unto him. And they're giving attributes of Allah to other people, to their shaykh. He sees you whatever you do and wherever you go. So they're corrupting the beliefs and the aqidah of, their, of the people who follow them. You know? And they're telling them that they directly to Allah and they are speaking the aqidah of their uh, followers of the people who are in their community so that in itself is corruption and when we are saying la tufsidu fil ardi they say qalu innama nahnu muslihun we are not causing corruption they say we're not causing we're not corrupting their aqidah this is the way they even some some people have said personally that, that you you're talking about is the sharia we're following it you know something else we're, 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 we're at a higher level than that how can you get a higher level than the sharia when the sharia is what allah sent rasulullah to give us that is what it is that's that's how you be a muslim if you're following something else that's a different way a different path it's not a sign so this is what they do they say one thing, they do another. They corrupt the, uh, the aqidah of the, of the people. Therefore, it applies to them that they're causing corruption in the earth. What else do they do? They usurp the wealth of the people. Me, myself, and my family, and many other people that I know have been victims of the wealth being sucked out and drained out of the community and put in the pockets of people. And there's no basis in Islam whatsoever for them to be to, to be basically forced, you know, uh, is spiritually abused into thinking that this they they have to give this money because it's religiously uh, legislated and mandated when it's not. So they're paying their percentages or their dues. The wealth is being taken from the people, and this is causing corruption. Lots of the youth in the community are uh, in and out of jail, committing crimes, and for things when and a lot of crimes are taking place due to poverty. These people already don't have a lot of money, but that wealth being taken out of their communities, out of their families, out of their pockets. Because they think religiously they have to. And then they have to turn to 
crime, selling drugs, and all these different things that ha happen, this has directly caused corruption in the earth. It has caused corruption. And lots of them uh, are, have been in and out of jail for this reason. Lots of uh, wives and, and, and daughters and mothers have been left on these lands and properties without money, without proper resources, while their husbands or the men are off, you know, making money or giving money or sending money uh, to the administration who then gives it to uh, Mubarak Jelani and his, and his uh, family. So they're saying, Oh, this is because, and then they said, oh, it's because for, I don't even know the reasons, plenty of reasons why they have said, but as we know now, this is basically, this basically is uh, a way that they were able to mass lots of wealth, lots of properties um, and money, and now they're fighting over it now, but they corrupted their aqidah, they usurped their wealth and caused corruption in the earth. Uh, they take the people's honor by massing the men calling their women over and and uh, commanding their women over top of their husbands. This takes the people's honor. This takes the women's honor as well. It takes the women's honor. It takes the men's honor. It emasculates them. And this the honor of a Muslim is one of the five rights that a Muslim has that's legislated in the Sharia. The honor of a person. And so they take this. This is corruption in the earth. Terrorized people, of course. We talked about that and how they were. Uh, Murders, bombings, and all types of other things that they were doing, armed robbery, robbing banks. This is in their history and part of their history. If this is corruption in earth, then what is? Of course, lying to the people and saying that they, you know, they talking to a lot. They are talking and orders and instruction and all this. this deceiving the people and having them believe something about a lot uh, and uh, these, things, these things, these things that they're doing are considered causing corruption in the earth. As ayah pertains to people who cause corruption in the earth, Ibn Kathir laid it out, the disobeying the commands of Allah, and Ibn Abbas and Ibn Masud said these this ayah is talking about the hypocrites. So a person can have the traits of a hypocrite. They can do some of the actions of a hypocrite, but that doesn't mean they're a full-blown, complete hypocrite, a munafiqun, but we do know the munafiqin are the worst of the worst, and they will have the worst punishment in the hereafter. Um, uh, going on, Ibn Kathir did uh, uh, explain that, and I'll explain this these next two, two slides, and you may be thinking, okay, where's this coming from? But... Uh, Let's, let's look at it and then I'll explain. Ibn Qadir talked about uh, that, uh, these, the ayahs, la tusidu fil and they say, inna nahnu muslihun. Indeed, we are only peacemakers. He said, this is the, they, they, we seek to be friends with both parties. The believers, and who does this sound like? This is something that the Munafiqin say, okay? It um, goes on to say that um, when they're talking about in this ayah, they say it is for peace, is it self mischief, although in their ignorant ignorance, they do not see it to be mischief. So the Munafiqin, one of the things that they do is, and I said already, that they, they, the Munafiqin does what they do for worldly gain for some safety, some security, some benefit, some wealth, uh, some status, or just because they're deviant and they want to harm the Muslims. But the fence striders, and I, I, maybe not necessarily, I'll say yes, the fence, fence riders have a share in this. Um, the apologists uh, can be lumped into this uh, category as well. And also, um, <laughs> Now, listen carefully when I say this. And also, some of the people who are off of the Jews, they don't believe, but they're still within the community. They're still in the community and functioning, going to their events or whatever. But so they are 
when they when they are on the, the lands and in, in, in different places at their ease and, and engaging with them with TMOA, they're fine and they have no issue with them. But when they speak to us or when they're around us, they just you know, yeah, we're 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 off the juice. We don't deal with them, uh, we don't believe like they believe, but you know, we're still in good graces with the community. And they're Uh, in good, great, good graces with us, or that they know us, or that we're dealing with them. Or first, they know the group, the group's beliefs and actions are corrupted, but they won't tell them. They won't tell them plainly. Why won't they tell them? <laughs> because of a worldly benefit. Does the fence rider, um, or does the person who's off the juice, but they're still hanging on to the community, are they doing that because of some? Uh, Ibadna, they think it's for religious reasons that it's going to benefit them. No, the only reason why the person who is off the juice is still pretending that they're in the community and allowing people to think that they still believe the corrupt beliefs in Naqida is for a worldly benefit. And this is what a munafiqeen does. The munafiqeen does their actions for some worldly benefit. They use the religion they will allow people to believe they're Muslim or, or they will say that they're Muslim, but they're the way you have people that they don't believe. They don't believe like a, uh, sorry, but, uh, they don't believe, right, in TMOA. They don't believe in Jelani. They don't believe in their Sheikh and Morshida and all that stuff. They absolutely do not believe it, but they're mum. They're quiet about it. They don't say a word about it because they have some worldly benefit or some business or something that's tied to that that makes them keep quiet, keep quiet about it. Okay, so this is one of the traits of the monarchic. I'm not saying that people are monarchics, but you have to understand you don't want to be. You don't want to have any of those traits. You don't want to, oh, then I'm going to, like, can I gain some money by pretending to be Muslim? Okay, then I'll do it. Can I gain some money or marry a girl or whatever the case may be by pretending to still be in TMOA, by pretending to believe in Mubarak Jazani, by pretending to, by signing the Bayar and NDA uh, to Sheikh Umnur, even though I know it's wrong, even though I know it's complete foolishness? Yeah, I'll do it for some worldly gain and benefit. Because truly, now, now if a person, because we know that some some of some of the, the 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 Sahaba in the earlier times they were tortured, they were beaten, and they did have to hide their Islam and things like that. Now, if a person truly in their heart they believe that themselves are going to be harmed or killed, then it's between them and Allah if they keep quiet and pretend. But Allah's earth is spacious, and just because you might lose a little bit of money, a little bit of wealth, you might lose the property that you've been building up and working on for years. I mean, listen, I was in TMOA for almost thirty years, and I had you know, develop a property and land and animals and fenced in areas and all that stuff. And we lost it all. I mean, we didn't lose it. I still might sue the person that has it, but still. <laughs> the point is that we had to leave it because we're not going to be associated with that. It's better to be poor or poorer than to have yourself and your children and, and your, your family to have to uh, to, to to live that way, pretending to be basically a mushrik, to pretending to be to have a, a corrupt aqidah when you know better. So this is one of the things. See, this is one of the traits of the munafiqin. What else? They contribute to the misguidance of the people by appearing to agree with them. So even though, let's take the the the, and maybe not, it's not the fence writer. Maybe it's a different term, but take the person who knows they know. For sure, Mubarak Jalani is, was ha, taught a corrupt aqidah belief system, and what he taught was deviant. I don't believe it. They do not believe in the Moshida Kamil. They don't believe Umnur should be the leader. They don't believe in any of the TMOA doctrines at all. Yet, they're there amongst them, showing their numbers to be more than they actually are. And there's so many majority of the people in TMOA right now fit into this category. They don't even believe in it at all. 
and they'll tell you as long as you don't tell them. And they'll say, I don't want to be on the record. I don't want to be known that it was me. I'll send you this information. I'll tell you about this. I'll talk to you about this, but I don't want you to know. I don't want them to know. It's for some world to gain and benefit. But what you're doing is you're causing corruption because you're leading other people to also be stuck in the community. It's like this. I was talking to a, I was talking to a, a brother. He said, man, I was in a meeting, a, T, uh, a TMOA meeting, and the uh, another uh, brother was talking and he said something. I said, man, that makes a lot of sense. It seems like that dude is off the juice. I said, actually, he is. I know he's off the juice, but no one else knows and he doesn't believe in it. I know you're off the juice, but no one else knows and doesn't believe in it. Even the two people literally are listening to some of the things that they're saying in these meetings and saying, man, it sounds like that dude is, doesn't believe in uh, Team Away. It sounds like it's, man, he's making too much sense to be a Jamadi. And yet here they are sitting shoulder to shoulder, maybe both pretending to be believers in Mubarak Jelani and the corrupt TMOA leader, and they won't say. So how many other people are stuck in it because they think they're outnumbered, but you're really not even outnumbered. So you're leading, you're, 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 you're causing other people to be harmed by you not speaking out and saying, hey, listen, I don't believe in this. This is not true. It's not Islam. I don't believe in it. I'm a Muslim. I'm following the Quran. I'm following the Sunnah. And if you want to hate me for that, you want to ostracize me for that, you want to cut me off from my family for that, okay, do it. But I don't believe in it. Watch how many people stand up with you and say, I don't believe either. I thought I was the only one. You're not the only one. But by you continuing to do it, you're, you are causing other people who may be a little bit less brave than you to stay in. And so you have a cascade of people who are stuck in because they think they're the only one. And they're afraid to even tell the person next to them that they don't believe it. Try it. When you do, you'll, you'll realize that almost everyone around you does not believe in what's going on or in TMOA. What else? Some people, they say, they think by taking some sort of balanced approach, they're helping, but it's actually only extending and increasing the corruption in beliefs and actions of the people. So the, you have the people, the apologists, they say, well, you know, it's not that bad. Or they try to say, well, there's some good in the Jamaat. They try to try to pinpoint some good things, but actually by just focusing on the good things, they're actually letting the people get away and overlook the bad things. And the bad things are the worst things ever. They're giving people things that are only attributed to a law. So you can't get past the belief in the seventh sultan in this shit. And you're having a, a, a female imam who says, he speaks to Rasulullah and he comes and visits and tells her stuff. I mean, The Sahaba, the people, his actual companions didn't even get this. But somehow, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. But still, by trying to say, well, I don't want to blow everything up. Like you guys have done. You guys have come up and I don't wait, so we'll just keep playing this game. You're extending their guidance and their deviance. Make it clear, make it plain, and then they will, you know, they won't be able to at least They'll know where you stand and more people will be able to join. But back to the ayah, the munafiqeen, one of the traits that they do is they try to go back between two groups. And in this instance, I'm not calling these people munafiqeen, but you have to understand this is one of the things that they do. Just try to say we want to be good. We want to be in the good. Races of both groups work that way. You, know, either you want to go with Anna or something, somebody in uh, some sort of dream reality, they, they want a two way go. And so basically, if the group, if TMOA dies out, they'll, they'll be able to say, man, I never believed in that. I was always off the juice, you know, but I was, you know, uh, they, can, they can have an excuse. But if they survive, they will still be able to enjoy the worldly benefits that the group has to offer. And, you know, this is, this is basically what the munafiqeen do.
especially with the Monafik Kindu, they try to keep playing the middle and they try to get the benefits of whatever group has the strength. And if the Muslims or the people upon the truth are defeated or they go away, if the people uh, who are, um, if the people who are, are on the, the truth are, uh, are, are, are beaten or defeated or they go away or whatever, they're silenced or whatever the case may be, then they'll be like, oh, they can continue on living in the benefits of being in Timaway. But if they are, uh, but if they are, um, if they, if if TMOA uh if TMOA continues on, they get the benefits. Sorry, I got distracted. Some someone's mic uh, was on, but uh, so if TMOA gets wins, they get to continue on and keep re reaping the benefits. If they lose, then they can they can claim that they were always on the side of the truth and they knew they were corrupt and X Y Z. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. A lot is going to reward you for whatever you suffer. Uh, perhaps whatever you might suffer in loss and worldly uh in, in in this world with uh the the rewards that the people who lost their worldly possessions uh in the time of the Rasulullah because they lost some 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 homes and some wealth and some things and some and some relationships some businesses or whatever they lost things um so we're not saying that you're not going to possibly lose something maybe you won't lose anything but the thing is, you will be rewarded for that. But just being, let's make it clear, because the munafiq is a coward, basically. But just being cowardly, like the munafiq, and not making it plain and clear is not going to be rewardable for you in this life or the next. How could it be? You're letting the religion of Allah be tarnished by people who are corrupting it or trying to corrupt it. You're letting other people be corrupted by you keeping silent. You are allowing possibly your children and your family to be infected by this corrupt belief, you know? So, I mean, it is, and I don't want to go on too long, so we'll, we'll, we'll wrap up, but it's something to really think about. The munafiqeen have these characteristics. This is what they do. We don't want to come down and be in the category of the munafiqeen. So the munafiqeen, they do certain actions and, and, and things, but their true beliefs and intent is hidden. If we are Muslims, we know that the Quran and the Sunnah is the standard in which we follow. We should make it very clear. And when something is outside of that, we make it known. And we don't hide uh, our beliefs because that is the way of the munafiqeen. May Allah accept our uh, efforts from us. Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamu ala al-mursaneen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته